Good morning. Good morning. I shared this with the first service. Um, what he didn't know whenever he was sending that text, I had texted him that and said, hey, just want to let you know we're going to be in town. And as soon as I sent the message, the Holy Spirit told me he's going to ask you to preach and you're to say yes. So about 40, 30, 40 minutes later, he said, hey, I know you're not coming to town for this, but would you, would you like to preach? And I was like, absolutely, I would love to preach. So we're, uh, we're glad to be here. New Covenant is um, it's home when we're here and uh, your family to us. Uh, we're excited about what God's doing here. We're excited about what God's doing in the nation's capital. We live 30 minutes west of Washington, D.C. Can we get an amen? amen. And uh, the, Lord is, the Lord is moving in the nation's capital. Uh, I, can feel, um, I can feel shaking. And uh, I heard it recently described this way. It's, it's not like it's the shaking for the purpose of judgment, though that may be part of it. But it's the shaking that brings things into order. Like if you put money into a machine and it doesn't fall in and you have to kind of shake the machine to get it to slide into its, get into alignment so that you can get what you put the money in there for. It's, it's shaking that uh, brings order to things. And it's happening in the capital. It's happening in, uh, in the church, the house of the Lord. And... Um, so we're excited. We're excited to be here. Are you guys excited? Okay. Um, Kelly's here. She was here for, well, not here for the first service, so uh, I just want to honor my wife. I'm glad that my family's here and friends that are here. Um, I believe that the Lord has given me a word for the time that we are in, the season that we're in, a lot of times there's certain, there's certain nuances in our experience with the Lord. There's certain times where maybe it's a time of repentance or maybe it's a time of glory. Uh, I really feel like the Lord has given me a word to describe kind of where we're at as a body and um, as individuals, as families, and what he's wanting to do in this season. So if you have your Bibles, if you'll turn with me to 1 Kings chapter 18. I'm going to read quite a bit of text, and uh, I'll read a little bit and then summarize a little bit and ping pong back and forth between reading and, and summarizing. But we're going to start in verse 20 of 1 Kings chapter 18. So Ahab sent for all the children of Israel and gathered the prophets together on Mount Carmel. So this is the children of Israel, which later passage, passages tell us is about 7,000 people. So you've got the children of Israel, the prophets of Baal, and Elijah on Mount Carmel with King Ahab. And Elijah came to all the people and said, How long will you falter between two opinions? If the Lord is God... Follow him, but if Baal, follow him. But the people answered him not a word. Then Elijah said to the people, I alone am left a prophet of the Lord, but Baal's prophets are 450 men. Therefore, let them give us two bulls, and let them choose one bull for themselves, cut it in pieces, and lay it on the wood, but put no fire under it. And I will prepare the other bull and lay it on the wood but put no fire under it. Then you call on the name of your gods, and I will call on the name of the Lord. And the God who answers by fire, he is God. So all the people answered and said, it is well spoken. So basically he's, he's laying out the parameters for how this is going to go down. He's laying out the terms, and then they agree to his terms. So for the, the next couple of verses in verse 25 and 29, we begin to, through 29, we begin to see the prophets of Baal. They begin to cry out loudly. They start dancing around the altar. They start cutting themselves, as was their custom, um, and prophesying, but no response. So skip down to verse 30. 
Then Elijah said to all the people, come near to me. So all the people came near to him, and he repaired the altar of the Lord that was broken down. Do you see that? He repaired the altar of the Lord that was broken down. And he did it very strategically. He did certain things. He took 12 stones, according to the number of the tribes of the sons of Jacob, to whom the word of the Lord had come, saying, Israel shall be your name. Then with the stones, he built an altar in the name of the Lord. And he made a trench around the altar, large enough to hold two seas of seed. And he put the wood in order. Can you say in order with me? He cut the bull in pieces and laid it on the wood and said, fill four water pots with water, pour it on the burnt sacrifice and on the wood. Then he said, do it a second time. And they did it a second time. And he said, do it a third time. And they did it a third time. So the water ran all around the altar and also filled the trench with water. Now, one thing I want to pause here, Elijah had prophesied a drought. And it had, been a, it had been famine and drought for three years. So here he is taking all this water and pouring on the altar at a time where water was scarce. That's part of the cost of this offering to the Lord. Okay? Verse 36. And it came to pass at the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice. Can you say specific time? Elijah the prophet came near and said, Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, let it be known this day that you are God in Israel, and I am your servant, and that I have done all these things at your word. Hear me, O Lord, hear me, that this people may know that you are the Lord God, and that you have turned their hearts back to you again. Now, one thing that I'd always, I don't know if I just kind of got lost in the, in the contention between Elijah and the prophets of Baal. I always thought that the fire on the altar was kind of like, okay, yeah, go show them up, God. Show them who's God. Yeah, okay, see, yeah. See, Yahweh's God. Baal ain't God. I always thought it was more about that. But as I read this, the Lord opened my eyes to see that it, though judgment for the prophets of Baal was part of it, the focus, Elijah's prayer was about the hearts of the people being turned back to the Lord God. The fire falling on the altar was about the people's heart, the children of God, and their heart being turned back to God the Father. Do you see that? So in verse 38, Then the fire of the Lord fell and consumed the burnt sacrifice, and the wood, and the stones, and the dust. And it licked up the water that was in the trench. Now when all the people saw it, their eyes saw the fire. When they saw it, they fell on their faces in response and said, the Lord, he is God. The Lord, he is God. This is what repentance looks like, okay? The fire falling on the altar led to repentance. It affected their eyes. God invaded their eyes with the fire and changed their heart to where now they are crying out to the Lord, the Lord, he is God. I'm going to summarize the next few verses. So basically, Elijah kills the prophets of Baal and he goes to Ahab and he says, hey, you need to go ahead and get out of here because rain's coming. Now, one thing that Maybe I knew it and didn't, didn't remember it, but as I was studying this, Baal, this particular false god that's mentioned here, was the god of fertility and weather. So the absence of rain, they're crying out to God for, to, you know, their god to, to fall on the altar. And yet here comes the true God who manifests with fire and the true God who brings the rain. The, the, the rain that their God couldn't bring. Do you see it? Do you see what I'm saying? So rain comes, floods, Ahab runs back, 
to tell Jezebel everything that Elijah did. And that's where we'll pick up in verse 1 of chapter 19. Ahab told Jezebel all that Elijah had done, also how he had executed all the prophets with the sword. Then Jezebel sent a messenger to Elijah saying, so let the gods do to me and more also if I do not make your life as the life of one of them by tomorrow about this time. So in other words, I'm going to kill you, Elijah, just like you killed my prophets. Okay, you seeing me seeing that? Verse, uh, verse three, and when he saw that, he arose and ran for his life and went to Beersheba, which belongs to Judah, and left his servant there. Now, Beersheba, sevenfold oath. So he runs to a place of covenant. We'll kind of leave that there. You can study that out, but I thought it stuck out to me. So he went himself a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat down under a broom tree and he prayed that he might die and said, it is enough, Lord, take my life for I'm no better than my father's. So he gets into this place of fear where he's been intimidated by Jezebel, a woman operating in intimidation, control, controlling her own husband, manipulation. And he runs for his life, and he, he's just had this powerful experience, but now he's running away, and he's crying out to God, take my life, for I am no different than my father's. Now, the Lord, the Holy Spirit showed me, highlighted that to me, that Elijah brings up this generational thing, where he basically says, I am no different than my fathers, my ancestors, my family. Take my life. The enemy is after the generations. Okay? Y'all quiet. Maybe you're listening. The enemy is after the generations. And he wanted to stop Elijah in that moment. I'm going to summarize the next few verses again. In verses 5 through 10, an angel of the Lord appears to Elijah, feeds him a cake and a jar of water. And Elijah went in the strength of that food for 40 days. 40 day journey to Mount Horeb, which actually is Mount Sinai. He traveled 40 days to the place where the Lord gave Moses the Ten Commandments. And when he gets there, he goes into a cave where the word of the Lord comes to him. And the word of the Lord that's mentioned in verse 9, it actually says the word of the Lord came to him and he, capital H, the word of the Lord said to him. Now, one thing that I felt like the Lord showed me in that was Jesus was the word made flesh. I believe this was Jesus coming to Elijah in the cave and talking to him, and he begins to tell him, what are you doing here? So in verses uh, 11 through 18, the word of the Lord, then he, the word of the Lord said, go out and stand on the mountain before the Lord. And behold, the Lord passed by and a great and strong wind tore into the mountains and broke the rocks in pieces before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, an earthquake, the Lord was not in the earthquake. After the earthquake of fire, the Lord was not in the fire, and after the fire, a still small voice. So it was when Elijah heard it, and he wrapped his face in his mantle. I looked up that word mantle. It, it actually, the Hebrew word used there means cloak and glory. So he wrapped himself in glory and went out and stood in the entrance of the cave. Suddenly a voice came to him and said, what are you doing here, Elijah? And he said, I've been very zealous for the Lord, of, Lord God of hosts. And because the children of Israel have forsaken your covenant, torn down your altars, killed your prophets with the sword, I alone am left, and they seek to take my life. Then the Lord said to him, go, return on your way to the wilderness of Damascus. And when you arrive, anoint Haziel as king over Syria, 
Also you shall anoint Jehu, the son of Nimshi, as king over Israel, and Elisha, the son of Shaphat, of abel Mahola, You shall anoint his prophet in your place. It shall be that whoever escapes the sword of Haziel, Jehu will kill, and whoever escapes the sword of Jehu, Elisha will kill. Yet I have reserved 7,000 in Israel, all whose knees have not bowed to Baal, and every mouth that has not kissed him. So in this verse, in these, these verses, we see the Lord informing Elijah of victories that are going to be connected to these people. Jehu was the king who actually killed Jezebel. So there, are, there, were, there were things that the Lord wanted to do through these individuals. Had Elijah stayed in the cave, had the Elijah decided to take himself out, these victories would have never happened. Do you, do you see what I'm saying? Do you follow that? In verse 18, the Lord reveals to Elijah that there are 7,000 in Israel who have not bowed their knee. Here he is saying, I'm the only one left. And he's like, hang on a second. There's a remnant over here that I've actually, I've got a people. I've got a people over here and I need you to go. They haven't bowed to Baal. They haven't kissed him. I believe that, that what we see in the life of Elijah in this text is similar to where we find ourselves today, where many of us in the body of Christ find ourselves, and what the Lord is doing. I know it's, this, this passage came to me because of my own personal experience recently, and I want to share some of that with you. I, um, we, we've moved up there to, to Virginia. We're 30 minutes west of Washington, D.C., and we moved up there with nobody, okay? We don't know, we don't have family up there. We don't have a support system. And so, like Elijah, we've kind of felt like we were the only ones. Like, you know, God, you brought us into this place, and uh, it ain't Statesboro. Let's just say that. And um, we, we don't know, where are the people like us, God? And uh, Kelly had started work back, going back to work, and... I'm still looking for a job, and in that, um, she had started work, and so I had the responsibility of, of taking care of our four children, six, nine, 11, 13. We've got a lot of personality in our house, okay? If you know my kids, you already know, but um, for two weeks, which may not seem like a lot, I mean, you're probably saying, CJ, it's only two weeks, come on, man, but like two weeks, Two weeks in the house with these kids. I, I told people, I was like, I mean, I felt like COVID wasn't even this bad. Like, like when we were in lockdown, like, this is different. This is, this, is, this is hard. And I had gotten to a place where I don't know that I've ever been that low. I don't know that I've ever been that to that point of where I wanted to escape that bad. I wanted to run like Elijah. I wanted to run. And it wasn't because somebody said, hey, I'm, I, got a, I, got a, I got your head right here. I'm fitting to send a headhunter after you. It wasn't because of that. It was just life. And I was heavy and weary and tired and tired of cleaning up messes and... Uh, it got bad. It got bad. And Kelly came home one day, and I was like, look, I got to run. Like, literally, I got to run. I got to do something. I got to get out of this house. And um, I, there's sidewalks everywhere where we live, okay? That's, that's a good thing. Uh, so I go on this run, and I'm out walking, and... Uh, so I was too sore from running, so I started walking. And uh, I just got to this place where I, I was listening to music, Lifehouse, hanging by a moment. Felt like I was hanging by a moment. And uh, I ended up hearing the Lord say, you think this is all about you, don't you? Like, you think you moved up here because this is all about you. 
I mean, he, he called me there, but you think this is all about you? This ain't just about you. This is bigger than you. This is, this is much bigger than you. What you feel is what my church in this region feels. That heaviness that you're feeling, that's how my people feel. That fatigue and tired and weary and you want to run? That's what my people want to do. But you ain't, no, you ain't going to run. And um, in that moment, I just began, it was like the Lord opened my eyes and I, I just, the whole perspective completely shifted in an instant. I can't describe it other than it was the grace of God. It was his grace that spoke to me on that run. To open my eyes to see that it ain't about you, CJ. It's bigger than you. This is about your inheritance, yes. The promise is on your life, but this is about your inheritance in your children. This is about the inheritance in the children of God. And I, um, I came home that night, and just like, just like the people that cried out right here, and they said, the Lord, He is God. The Lord opened my eyes, and I repented. God, forgive, forgive me for my failures as a father. I had gotten to a place to where I would, my kids would try to come to me, and it was like as soon as I would hear them, I was just like, I can't, I can't, sorry, I can't listen. That's a problem. I can't fix that right now. I got it. And I would just, but when the Lord opened my eyes to see that, CJ, this is bigger than you, I began to listen differently. It was like the Lord changed the way I even hear my children. Things that I thought were problems were actually just manifestations of their heart cries. The Lord opened my eyes, cried out to him, I repent. It changed the way I prayed. The next day, I went on another run. And this time, I listened to some Jason Upton. And um, I found myself, I, it was like all I could pray was fire. God, let your fire fall in this region. The heart that the Lord has for the D.C. metro area, it was like God gave me that heart. Crying out for fire. I was running down the sidewalk, passing the school. Father, fill that school with fire. Passing by homes, fill that, that home with fire. Passing by a church, fill that church with fire. Turned the corner, got on a main road where there's multiple churches, Vietnamese church. God, fill the Vietnamese pastors with fire. And as I'm listening to this song and just literally praying in the spirit and praying in my understanding as I'm running, I hear some loud noise behind me. And I knew it wasn't the song I was listening to, so I turned around to look because it startled me. And it was a fire truck with its lights on and its sirens going. And I started crying. God, thank you that you hear me. Thank you that you are bringing fire. Thank you, God, that you are going to turn the people's hearts back to you through fire. Just like this passage of Scripture. The fire of the Lord is coming to the house of the Lord with the fear of the Lord. And that will lead people to repentance. Removing the scales from the eyes, opening the hearts to receive what the Lord is doing in this moment. Because just like Elijah was at a specific time, we are at a specific time. This is a specific time in the church, the body of Christ, in your life, in your children's life. We are at a time where the fear of the Lord is going to manifest 
The hearts of many will return to the Lord. Their eyes be opened. Their voice is crying out, the Lord, he is God. The Lord, he is God. Can we just say that? The Lord, he is God. Say it again. The Lord, he is God. I feel unction from the Holy Spirit right now just to put your hand on your heart. Everybody in this room. Say, Heavenly Father, open the eyes of my heart so that I may see you. Open the eyes of my heart so that I may see you. Now, I just want to take a moment and just allow him to reveal himself to you. The Lord is bringing lost sons and daughters back home to the family of God. That's what was happening in this, in this scripture. Their eyes had been filled with idolatry, and yet in an instant, their eyes were open to see the fire of God. And they returned, their hearts returned to the Lord. I'm hearing testimonies about it. I've had people this week call me out the blue and say, hey, man, I just felt like I heard a, a voice tell me to call you and encourage you, and, and I've rededicated my life, and, and uh, I don't know. I just, I mean, out the blue, people reaching out to me, people I ain't talked to in years. The Lord is moving on the hearts of people, sons and daughters, are returning, their hearts are returning to the fathers. In verse 4 of chapter 19, Elijah draws this attention to these generations. Can I tell you that the generations that he's talking about here, that is, that is what the enemy is after. He's after your generation. He's after your children. He's after cutting that, severing that connection between the generations, because there's this, there's this thing that happens when the generations come together. There's this thing that happens when the baton gets passed from Elijah to Elisha. There's victories that in battles that would have never been fought had Elijah just laid down and quit and not moved forward and not went as the Lord told him. But the, but the Lord is calling us in this season. He's strengthening us to advance, not to run and hide, not to try to escape. That's too hard. That's too hard. Well, you know what? If something's too hard, you just need more strength. It ain't that it's too hard. It's just you just need a little bit more strength. Those that wait upon the Lord, he shall renew their strength. They will mount up as wings of eagles. He's going to give you new perspective when you wait on him. Serve him. Wait. Not just, I'm going to sit here and do nothing. But serve the Lord. Attend to him. Minister to him. The Lord has strengthened us to advance and to move forward, to adjust to his shifting as he brings things into order. Just like this altar where Elijah put things in order, the Lord is bringing things into order. The destiny of individuals and families and nations are, were connected to Elijah's submission and obedience to God. The destinies of individuals and families and businesses and nations are connected to your obedience and your submission to God. There's things that my children will not get, wouldn't have gotten from the Lord 
had we not said yes to him. There's things that your children will not receive unless you say yes. He's having us take an inventory of things. I'm going to give you four points as a call to action. What this, how do we apply this word where, where this is happening? There's this, this altar and there's fire and there's, I'm, I'm weary and I don't want to live and, and being sent. What do we do? One, evaluate the altars in your life. Just like Elijah assessed the altar, saw that it was in disarray, saw that it was broken down, he gathered stones and wood and placed them in a specific order. God is using this season to bring things into order. In our homes, in the house of God, in the nation, there's shifting that's taking place. They're shaking this taking place, and it's bringing things into order. Evaluate those altars. I, I have a friend of mine who was preaching recently, and he said, he said something that, that really kind of put that even to deeper perspective for me, that there are, the, what is the fragrance coming from the altar of your marriage? What is, the, what is the smell that's rising from the altar of your home, your children, those relationships? What is the of the Lord in your life? Is the altar that's, that you have given to the Lord, is it in need of repair? Evaluate the altars in your life. Then what? Then the fire falls and we repent. Repent to the Lord. You take this inventory of, of your parenting, your marriage, your work ethic, your leadership, your decision making, your relationship with Jesus. You see that it's in this right. Father, forgive me. Just like the Lord opened my eyes and I sat on the couch. And cried out. God, forgive me for not listening to my children. Forgive me for just wanting to run and escape because life is hard. Repent. It literally is a change in the way you think. When you see the fire, you see everything else differently after that. Number three, get in his presence. Elijah finds himself in a cave with the word of the Lord. Get in the Word. Get in the presence of God. Get in the Word. And then number four, move in His strength. The angel of the Lord gave Elijah cake, water, gave him strength for 40 days. He gets in this cave, he gets instruction from God, and then he says, go return the way of the, the wilderness of Damascus. You can't just stay in the cave. God is commissioning you to go. And I really feel that we are in this moment. We are in this moment as the body of Christ where there are individuals that are waiting for us to walk in the room. There are individuals that are waiting for us to come and lay hands on them. There's a calling on their life that's connected to our obedience to pray for them. 
that's connected to our obedience to prophesy over them. You got to get out the cave. Stand with, stand with me, if you will. Yes, Lord. Father. Thank you, God, that you're so faithful. I wouldn't be up here on this stage preaching this word if he hadn't have spoke to me by his grace on that sidewalk. It's his grace and his faithfulness. He loves you and he sees you. He sees you right where you are. Father, thank you today, God, that you see your children. Thank you, God, that today those who have been hiding in the cave, those who have been fighting heaviness every single day, those who have been fighting despair every single day right now, by the power of the name of Jesus, the blood of Jesus, I prophesy light into your body. Light into your imaginations, light into your bedroom, light into your home, light into your car, in your mind, in your dreams. Thank you, God, that we will not fear. This will be a no fear zone. New covenant will be a no fear zone. No fear permitted here. No fear. No fear. Thank you, God. I see the Lord using this house to bring legislation. Legislation, right? Okay. I see the Lord using this house to bring legislation in this region, in this city. No fear. Walking in authority, walking in the call of God on your life. No timidity. No timidity. People will come here and get their voice. People will come here and the word of the Lord will fill their mouth. Their identity, their boldness, the hand of the Lord. Thank you, God. Thank you, God, that the hearts of your people are turning to you in this hour. Are turning to you. And we will not hide in a cave, but we will move. We'll go where you want us to go. We'll move where you want us to move. We'll say, we'll write the song. We'll do the album. We'll build what you tell us to build. I see just this holy inspiration and creativity just coming onto this house. Dreams come into life. No fear. <laughs> No fear. You've been sitting on that word for 10 years, wondering when, but you've been too scared. But when the no fear zone 
you come into the no fear zone all of a sudden that thing that's kept you from walking that out and from being obedient all of a sudden you find yourself being bold thank you God I want to extend an invitation in this moment that if you feel like you just need to respond to this word like I, I, I have been that person I, I wanted to just run away as far as I could from life from the hardship I wanted to quit I almost quit my job I almost quit my marriage. I almost quit my family. You've been running in fear. If that's you, I want to extend an invitation to you to come to the front. No fear. No judgment. Maybe you want to move out. You feel like, man, I just, I want to just take that step. I don't even know Jesus. I certainly don't know him like, like he revealed himself to Elijah and, and, and I want him to speak to me and I, I want my life to be changed. I want the fire that turns my heart back to the Father. I'm going to ask you to come to the front. Just to step out. No fear. No fear. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Father. Boldness. Boldness. Courage. 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 Be strong and courageous. Move in His strength. Thank you right now, God, that collectively, Father, that we come to you laying our altars at your feet. Our families, our marriages, our relationships, our relationship with you, God. We ask for fire on the altar. Open our eyes, God, to see you rightly. The Lord, he is God. The Lord, He is God. The Lord, He is God. No more isolation. No more isolation. Right now, I just curse every demon of isolation and depression. Depression? <laughs> I ain't scared of you. I prophesy light into your home. Light into your mind. Heaviness go. Thank you, Lord, for doing the work. Opening the eyes of your sons and daughters to see you rightly. Giving us strength, Father, to light fires in this region. To burn with holy fire. Where you go, we'll go, God. What you say, we'll say. What you pray, we'll pray. Do it, God. Do it, God. Right now, all across the room, I just want you to open your mouth and just begin to just talk to the Lord. Talk to the Lord. Just begin to tell Him He's wonderful. Tell Him He's wonderful. Pray the prayer Elijah prayed. Open the eyes of my heart, God, to see you. Open my eyes to see you. Do it, Lord. No fear, no timidity. Let's just take a moment. Just begin to pray. Courage to pray. God, give your people courage to pray. Give your people courage to pray. The words, Lord. The word of the Lord. Holy visitations from the Lord. Holy visitations from the Lord. 
Right now, I just prophesy fire into the live stream. I prophesy fire into the homes on the live stream. Thank you, God, that you will feel the screens that they're watching this right now, God, with fire. That this video will go across the nations, Lord. And that people watching this video will be filled with fire. Occupy their bodies with fire. Occupy their homes with fire. Occupy their towns and their cities with fire. That fire will spread. And the hearts will turn back to you. The Lord, He is God. The Lord, He is God. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 No more weariness. No more weariness, God. Open in the eyes. Open in the eyes of the people. Opening the eyes of the people to see you rightly, God. God is your source. I know that's for somebody. I'm not trying to just throw out a blanket word. But the needs you have Financially, God is your source. It flows from Him. It flows from Him. And He will turn the hearts of the person who has what you need towards you. You will find favor in their sight and they will bless you. Yes, Lord. Thank you, God, for doing it. Doing it today. Doing it today. Doing it today. Can we say amen collectively? God is good. He sees you. When you leave this place today, go light a fire somewhere. Not literally, because it's dry. I don't know how it's dry here after all that rain. But... Go to work on fire. Go to work on fire. That's what we're here for. Somebody's destiny is connected to your obedience and submission to God. Submit to God. Be obedient. No fear. No fear. I'm going to pray dismiss. Father, we just thank you, Lord, for your people today. Thank you, God, that you see every single person in this place. God, that you know exactly where they're at. Thank you right now, Father, for repairing the broken places in their heart, healing every area that needs to be healed, filling them with fire, opening their eyes to see you rightly given them the strength to move forward with no fear. To move, to advance, to pass the baton for the victories of other generations. Thank you today, God. We bless you and thank you, Father, that you bless this people today. In Jesus' name, amen. Awesome. You guys appreciate CJ? Oh, yeah. Amen. Hey, we're going to have uh, we're going to have next steps today. Uh, many people have registered for that and that will be down this hallway and then to the right. Uh, my wife is down there now waiting for you and we will